Daddy. You want to get pet? You know he wants to be pet when his tail's wagging. <laughs> he rolls over. Come here, he loves snow. This is our this is our dog that was supposed to be 80 pounds and he's a hundred and the Amish told us he'd only be 80 pounds and now he's probably like more like 140. Probably shot deer smaller than him. But he's great with the kids. And he loves people. Bernese Mountain Dog. And he loves snow. Well, my kids have been asking me to do a YouTube video, and we've been so busy, and normally I do farming videos, but today I'm going to do a video that's a little bit different. We have been here over the winter building a house on our farm, and uh, I'd like to show you this project on this YouTube video because I don't have a lot of farming stuff going on right now because of all the snow. Um... And most people are like, why in the world would you want to build a house when you have one right here? This one's a little small, has issues. We're going to probably move it off the property or take it down when this one's finished. My joke is I don't like moving, so I'm going to just take our stuff from that door and throw it through that window. It'll make life much easier. So uh, we will uh, see this will be a probably a couple year project. But it is possible to build a house and not just general contract a house, but actually build a house. The codes are not that ridiculous. Most inspectors are not your enemy, like everybody thinks. They're your friend. And if you call them enough and ask them questions, they won't really care after a period of time anyway. And they'll just leave you, <laughs> leave you alone pretty much. Anyway, let me show you a couple of things. One of the reasons we wanted to build a house is because I personally am tired of remodeling houses. And some things really frustrate me. So one of the things that frustrates me is when everybody builds a house, when they used to build a house a long time ago, they didn't do this. But now when they build houses, they use really thin sheeting, half inch usually. This is five eighths and it's plywood. They usually use OSB too. Don't like it because OSB doesn't hammer in well. It gets wet. It warps easier. Plywood isn't perfect either. Probably shiplap's the best. But I would certainly think plywood is much better than OSB. Or I would like to personally think it is. Uh, one of the things we've noticed as well when we've remodeled houses, everything sags. Because nobody really had engineers back then. They didn't understand loads quite as well. They just threw together what they had. Um, we've actually even gone way above code on a lot of the stuff because I'm anal retentive mostly about certain things. So most people would do two by tens here, Southern yellow pine. I think these are two by twelves and, uh, they're dug fur. It's actually a little over what we need for these spans. Uh, and, uh, I'll show you around here. This is our living room. We have nine foot ceilings in the whole house. Cause we're trying to make this look like a farmhouse, right? Uh, Nine foot ceilings here, looking out, living room view. Living room view into the old house. So obviously that'll change when that's gone, living room view. And this is gonna be really cool. We have a, a double-sided fireplace that's gonna come up and it's gonna go right through. And this is gonna be a vaulted ceiling. So it's gonna go up there. It's gonna be an insert so it can actually heat the house and, or it can be for cosmetics. So it's gonna do both. Uh, it's going to be really, really large, so I'm excited to get that going. We actually have a form already poured coming up through the basement to, to do that, and that's very uncommon. Most guys don't spend the time to do that. That's something a little bit different. Casey's view is really, really nice out of the kitchen. There's a lot of windows, window on each side of the stove. This is the view over her sink, and this is a very large view, and there's really no cupboard space. Um, uh, it's, it was designed that way that we just live in a really beautiful area. So it's all windows. We do have, I mean, there'll be lower cupboards, but there is a pantry here and that's why there's a pantry here. So some of the things that we did that were interesting is people would laugh if they walk through this. They're like, why did you, this is a weight, this is a non weight bearing wall and you have jacks on it and you have headers on it. Well, we've learned from remodeling a bunch of houses or helping people remodel houses and doing a total remodel on one of ours. When you have a lot of kids and they slam the doors all the time, trim falls off nonstop. Well, that's because nobody actually frames in a door. They frame in a door all the time to the bare minimum um, uh, and they don't ever add any extra structure there. And with seven kids, I mean, 
stuff falls apart all the time. So you have to really overbuild it. The other thing that we've learned from remodeling houses is every window rots out. Doesn't matter how good it is installed. Eventually over time, 20, 30 years, there's gonna be issues with it. So a couple things to fix that problem is we use redundancies and what we do kind of like they do with airplanes. So we first we install the window right, but before we install it, we actually install a, ce a cedar um, piece of board here that's beveled down. So, uh, and then we'll take like a rubber flash and we put it over the window and then any water that gets in that sill actually runs out. So we're actually planning for when it fails for a backup plan. And uh, we will do that. And uh, uh, once again, the LVLs, a ton of LVLs in this house, all because of we've witnessed so much sagging over time. Maybe it's good for 20 years, but when you get in that 40, 50, 60 years, then we notice sagging. So the steps also probably went ahead to do this many stringers. Stringers are a pain in the butt to do, but we added an extra one just to be safe. Uh, once again, when you have a lot of kids, especially four boys, things fall apart really fast because they're rough on stuff, so overbuild it. Our upstairs, we have three dormers and three dormers. And I know any of you that are builders are thinking, you're an idiot. And maybe so. I mean, we wanted something that looked old like a farmhouse and these little, they call them doghouse dormers. And the reason this is a doghouse we actually have a knee here. This is called a knee. So it's six feet and it jumps up to eight feet. Well, this dormer's eight feet right up here. So we have a truss, a truss engineer helped design a truss that will take the load here. So we actually don't have a little bearing wall here. A lot of dormers have a little wall by them and they're kind of all boxy because they need some bearing because they're too big. These are simply designed to give the outside of the house character and to allow a lot of light in upstairs. So these are really large windows for upstairs windows. And uh, this is a view out what I think is going to be the boys' room. The boys and girls are fighting over it mostly because of, of this view out the back. And the boys like to watch the bucks on the field. So, And they will see. They can use their binoculars and stuff and watch that. So... But all of the, all of the, uh, there's a lot of windows upstairs here. So uh, interestingly enough, this is a 912 pitch. So this house is extremely high. There will be a porch along the front that'll break that up eventually or at, on the, across some of the front. But the idea is to have it look like an old kind of traditional farmhouse, no vinyl siding, none of that. We'll probably, I'm not quite sure what we're going to do for siding, but it's going to look like an old farmhouse we really are hoping at the end of the day for that feel so that's our project